Super Rugby Trans Tasman, two Friday games. It is almost midnight. It is after midnight over here, so we'll get these wrapped up pretty quickly and head off to bed. But, I mean, looking at the scores, you'll be able to see they were both pretty close games. They weren't whitewashers, although it is still two Kiwi teams that ended up picking the, uh, the wins this week. The first one, the Crusaders and the Force, on paper it was going to be a hiding, but it wasn't hiding. The Force were able to keep it pretty close. That being said, if you look at the final try score time, it does mean that the Force kind of got a consolation one at the end, which brought it closer. Never was this one in doubt for the Crusaders. The Force did score first through Pulu. Nice step on Will Jordan. Goes over for a try 7-0. But then the Force concede three tries in a row to uh, to Mataele, to Jordan, and to Vetu Douglas. You've got kind of a maul try from Douglas. Peels off the side. You've got turnover ball for Mataele's try. And um, just a two men over for Will Jordan's try. So really good work from the Crusaders. They go from being 7-0 down. 7-7, 12-7, 17-7. Remember, Maul is not playing. So um, your man Fergus Burks, he, he misses a few conversions, but, you know, sometimes that kind of thing just happens. Um, the Force did hit back with that man Callan, who's first start at number eight. He got a try um, to make it 17 points to 14. That's really game on. The Force has gone like 10 phases, going through the phases and, and pressurizing the, the defense for the Crusaders. Crusaders did have a try chalked off through Mataele. With a knock on at the ruck from Bryn Hall. That was an unlucky one for them. But then the Force had a bit of unlucky play on their own. Where, I mean, it's unlucky in that that was caught. Godwin did a neck roll on um, David Havili. And it went from being a Force penalty to attack the Crusaders right before halftime. To them defending on their own line right before halftime. And the Crusaders score through Sione Havili from the resulting maul. So, um, I don't know, it was a tap. They mauled it, but it failed, and then they tapped it when they won another penalty. Went through a couple of phases, and see only how Billy went over. So 24-14 at half time. 24-14. Crusaders don't score many points in that second half. Um, Oliver Fellow looks to have scored a magic one in the second half. Richard Kahu with a phenomenal pass, like a tip push pass. That gets chalked off because they say it's forward, and then they have a line out to attack the Crusaders because the Crusaders can see the penalty. The force muck it up. That's really one of the stories of this game for the Force is that when they had opportunities down the Crusaders' end, they couldn't quite execute. And that's brutal for them. But also credit to the Crusaders' defense, I guess. It kind of balances out. Um, the Force only missed one lineup. They were 13 from 14 in this game. The one they missed was like a prime time attacking opportunity in the Crusaders' 22. Uh, Crusaders more went close on 46 minutes. Uh, it looked like it was going to be held up at Bryn Hall. Making up for his knock-on at the ruck before. Gets the ball out of the mall before it gets held up and bullet passes it. Uh, Will Jordan just hits the line running and he goes over for a try. So at that point, it's 29-14. Looking pretty comfortable. Two minutes later, Will Jordan gets another one. But you'll notice the scoreboard doesn't go up any higher. So what happened there? The force got incredibly lucky, man. Because Strawn looked like he was... Like as the, the kick was going for the sideline, he was trying to keep it in the field of play. And he did. The pass went to Miotti. Miotti knocked it on. They played advantage. Will Jordan ends up with the ball. Scoots over the line for a try. But they go back to look at Strawn keeping the ball in touch in field. He didn't keep it in field. His foot was in touch. So it's a lucky one that he mucked it up. Unbelievably lucky. They, they almost conceded a quick fire double to Will Jordan. The crowd boo like crazy, but you see it. His foot's on the whitewash, man. I don't know what you're booing. I know it's boo. Your, your team doesn't get a try, but I would have thought you just kind of let that one go. It was pretty obvious. Anyway, um, and from there, the force start turning the screws, man. They really put the pressure on, but just lacking the clinical edge to convert. Again, they either knock it on or the, the Crusaders win a turnover. They just can't quite break them until the 80th minute, like 79 something minutes. Olo Fila gets a try to death. It's turnover ball in their own 22, the force. They've been defending up until this point. Um, they start running it down the right wing. Eventually they get it to Goblin. Goblin sees nobody's home at the back. He just hoofs it long. Olo Fila is quick and he is the first man to the ball. He's got way too much time, way too much space. He just has to dot the ball down in the Crusaders goal area. And sure enough, it is a try. 29 points to 21. And that was with 14 men as well. Because Anstey, the replacement, Lucy had gone off injured. They couldn't replace him because it was just a hand. No blood, no concussion replacements kind of thing. 
unbelievable. So the Crusaders drop from a bonus point winning to position to just a win. And that's the second game they have dropped a bonus point. The Brumbies game, they weren't able to get one. And this one, they weren't able to get one either. Yeah, crazy. I mean, Will Jordan scores a couple of tries, but he also has a kind of couple of defensively bad reads. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a phenomenal result for the force. I guess, talking about a loss, it's hard to explain. Um, they were just supposed to get a hiding, and the fact they didn't, Speaks well to where they're at. Run meters, 299 to 217. Uh, clean breaks, four apiece, which is interesting. Possession, 6139 to the force. Territory, 6238 to the force. So they were battering on the Crusaders' door. But it's a very hard one to break down. Turnovers conceded, 12 to 8 to the Crusaders. So the Crusaders have 39% possession and yet four more turnovers conceded that Scott Robertson will not be happy about. Uh, the Force have got 10 offloads to the Crusaders 2. Defenders beaten is 22-15 to the Force. I mean, a good bit of news for the Crusaders is their tackling percentage was almost at 90. The Force was at 87, so defensively both sides pretty solid. There's no 40-point score from either side here. It's relatively tight. It's a kind of a normal-ish game in those terms, but... Um, yeah, the Crusaders looked like they lost the game at the end, and that's because they lost the point at the death, which, depending on what happens with the Hurricanes and then the Blues and the Hurricanes, maybe the Highlanders as well in the coming games, it could be the difference between making a final or not. They had it right up until the last minute, and then they lost it, the Crusaders. So they will be absolutely gutted. But remember, they, they played a really inexperienced team, so... Yeah, um, they still got a win despite that fact. The Crusaders are away to the Rebels next week, so they'll be banking on a bonus point win. The Force are away to the Blues, which could be a really fascinating one. Speaking of the Blues, they were in the next game, which was against the Reds over in Brisbane. I remember the Crusaders gave the Reds an absolute hiding, but then the Reds bounced back with a win over the Chiefs. So the Blues were in a tricky position here where they... Uh, you minimum requirement is a win being top of the log and preferably a bonus point win they did put themselves in a position to get a bonus point but man credit to the reds for for keeping this one relevant right up until the last minute and the reds were not helped by the fact that james o'connor pulls out like a day before and bryce Hegarty, i think on game day pulls out so your guy who was going to be 10 pulls out and your guy who was going to be your replacement 10 pulls out so you end up with a debutante at fullback and your number 12 playing 10 really really crazy stuff uh, but the crowd wasn't the best for this one it wasn't the best for either game to be fair but um the entertainment value was certainly there um the blues conceded the first try they did get the first points they got a penalty uh earlier to make it three nil um heem put dalguna on his backside at one point early so the blues were looking pretty dangerous but then it was wilson straight through a gap flat very flat pass from uh, from paisami Wilson's hitting the ball that quick, it looks like he's forward. He's probably not forward. But, yeah. My first reaction as a Blues fan has got to be forward. But, uh, yeah, Paisami put him straight through the gaps. But, yeah, as I said, he hits at a pace, so he probably catches it kind of behind his hip, making it look forward. It was a great period of play for the Reds, to be fair. And uh, capped off with a beautiful try. Seven points to three, first lead change. But then the Blues turn the screws, paying Mosa. Gives away a cynical penalty and he's yellow carded on 25 minutes and the Blues absolutely capitalized. Similar to what the Reds did to the Chiefs last week with the extra players. The Blues with the extra man. Uh, Papa Ali gets one on 27. It's a, um, it's a line out maul uh, but it can't go anywhere. They go through some phases and he eventually just busts over. It's a good reward for some dominant play. Back in front, 10 points to 7. And then 34 minutes, Talia gets a very different try uh they go through again a bunch of phases but there's a gap and talia has been quiet much of the season but you can't give a man a gap that big there's a gap he takes it he, he puts the hammer down goes through the gap maybe beats a defender but kind of only half with a bit of a uh, offend gases through it 17 points to to seven so they go into the yellow card period seven three in front and come out 10 points behind brutal in the scheme of this game uh halftime stats 
our uh, run meters is 199 to 240 with the Blues favoring it. The Reds have had slightly more ball, 52%, and less possession with the Blues having 56%. Crucially, the Reds' tackling percentage at halftime is 77%, which continues that poor stat that we showed before the start of the game, which was also in the 70s. The Blues, on the other hand, are 86. I should say the Reds missed a penalty right before halftime. Um which would have made it at least a bit closer. Uh, second half starts, Tui Pilotu gets a try after the Blues go. There are a heap of phases as well. Um, Talia had gone close. It's 24 points to 7. At this point, the Blues have got to be shifting their mindset to bonus point win. Bonus point win. The bonus points are going to be probably the deciding factor amongst the teams who are at the top of the log. At that point, you'd be mad not to be thinking about it. But then the, it's the Reds who strike back. It's playing Amosa who gets one. It's a weird one because as a fan, you go and they knocked it on. They're like a meter from the line. And they drop the ball and it goes forwards. But the ruling is that it went backwards before it went forwards. So it's not forwards. When you're a fan, if that's a club rugby game, it's a knock on all day long. But when they analyze it by the letter of the law, it's not a knock on. So it doesn't sit right. But sometimes that's just the way it goes. 24 points to 14 playing Amosa is on the board. It was an on-field try. A try it stands. Um, 54 minutes, Christie gets one after uh, going through a bunch of phases. And to be fair, I thought he could have scored the two Pilotu one if he just backed himself to go for the line, but he didn't. Uh, Blues go 10 plus phases. Two Pilotu, good carry, gets close. Uh, Christie spots a gap, dots the ball down. Good stuff from him. He almost gets smashed as he's putting the ball down, but he manages to avoid that as well. 31-14, uh, maybe the bonus points back on. Red Scrum says no. 70 minutes, huge Huge red scrum, which is very concerning because you've got Hodgman and Lolala on the pitch. Two All Blacks props are getting absolutely manhandled. Um, and from the resulting advantage, they go a cross kick to Dalgunu. We were expecting cross kicks to Vunivalu, which never really happened. But they go cross kick to Dalgunu. And uh, there's two Blues players near him. Nobody goes for it. A classic case of you take him, yours. And Dalgunu will not score many easy ones from a cross kick in that one. So, uh, yeah, yeah, pretty poor, pretty poor, 21, 31. Interestingly, with like a minute and a half left, Talia gets penalized for a tip tackle. It was pretty marginal, but they go penalty, and uh, they opt for the three. Dalgunu kicks it. I haven't seen him take many kicks in the past, but he nails it to make it 24, 31. So the Reds are back within touching distance. Blues kick it off. Reds go through some phases. Blues are able to eventually get the loose ball. Kick the bloody thing out, and they will take the win. Now, the fact that the Crusaders dropped a bonus point means the Blues dropping a bonus point here is not as bad as it could have been. If the Hurricanes go and get a bonus point, they will edge the Blues on the table with one game in hand. So, it's not the end of the world for the Blues, largely because the Chiefs have lost, Highlanders have dropped two, and the when I say two, I mean two bonus points. And the, Hur uh, the Crusaders have dropped two bonus points. So the Blues have just dropped the one with one game to go. Uh, run meters finished 492 to 419 with the Reds edging it. The Reds have 57% possession, 52% territory, seven clean breaks to three. That's 24 defenders beaten a piece. So the Reds are in this contest for sure. Tackling percentage, the Reds bump it up to 82%. The Blues are at 87. Blues have to make 160 tackles to the Reds 110 um, it's just that yellow card period, man. Reds will absolutely look back at that one as a as a as a game changing moment. But good on the Blues for for executing when they had the kind of when they had that advantage. Talia, good game, finishes with four defenders beaten and that try. Defensive shift. Carlo Tuyoti, nineteen from nineteen tackles. Uh, Papa Lee, eighteen from eighteen. Uh, Henry for Isaac Henry for the Reds makes five defenders beaten. By the Brendan Payne Hamosa has 73 run meters, which is, um, yeah, which is pretty crazy. Speaking of crazy, Laulala's offside, picking up the ball at the back of the Reds' ruck is just mind-numbingly explosion, stupid, crazy, brain fart, whatever you want to call it. That one's madness. I don't know if they'll show that in the highlights package. But he must have thought he was Tate McDermott or Moses Sarovi for a moment because he just trucked along to the Reds' ruck and went to pick up the ball like he's their halfback. Madness. Madness. 
Anyway, um, Dagunu slipped over on the pitch at one point as well. The Reds could have had another try. I think it was Dagunu. Nobody in front of him just slips over on the pitch. Blues defense is able to get back. Crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, as I mentioned, the Blues will host the Force and watch beca what becomes a pretty important game. And um, the Reds are away to the Hurricanes. So they are done at Suncorp for this season. But yeah, pity James O'Connor and co. couldn't play, but... That's just the way it goes on another day. It could have been another result, but this is how it has gone. You guys let me know your thoughts on the games. How do you think they went? Do you think the Blues are still in the box seat? Or is this Advantage Hurricanes? Do you think the Force will maybe give the Blues a hard time next week? Crusaders? How gutted are they going to be to have dropped that bonus point? But equally, you can't help but be proud of the Force. Because as I said, written off by all and sundry. Put in a proper, proper shift. You guys let me know your thoughts on the games. Uh, like this video if you got this far through it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Consider subscribing on Patreon. Buy me a coffee. Follow on Twitter. Like the video if I say that. All that stuff. All helps. It's after midnight. I'm going to go to bed. You guys take care. Talk to you again soon. See you later. Bye.